Welcome to Lecture Online. Of course, one of the giants in astronomy was Galileo Galilei. He lived in Italy. He was born in 1564 and died in 1642. Again, he lived to a ripe old age. That's 36 plus 42. That's 78 years. And during that time, he made tremendous discoveries. He was a real scientist. He really accepted the Copernican concept that the sun was at the center and that the earth revolved around the sun. He really bought into that. And he tried to uh, proved that through various theories and he worked with the theory of gravity and tried to show that this was indeed the case. Of course, he didn't succeed because it was very difficult to prove that. And the church at the time really was against this concept because not putting the earth to the center universe was kind of like heresy. It's kind of like going against the will of God. And so Cardinal Bel Bellarmine, who was then responsible for the region where, Coperna where Galileo lived, said that the Copernican system cannot be defended without a true physical demonstration. They said, we're not buying into this because you haven't proven to us, you haven't done a demonstration that proves that the Copernican theory was indeed true. And of course, that's very difficult to do with, especially in those days, with the lack of technology that we have today. So, but Galileo kept on working at it and kept on publishing things and kept on saying that, no, this is true, I'm going to prove it. He worked very hard on that theory of, uh, of the tides and the theory of gravity and how the gravity worked on the tides and because of the motion of the earth and the sun according to Copernicus it would cause the tides and of course his theory didn't quite work out and it didn't match and of course he couldn't explain why there were two tides a day instead of only the one tide a day that should happen and he thought well that was just because of some other circumstances he couldn't understand yet but he was true to the theory saying yes Copernican theory is true I just have to prove it somehow so this, uh, this went on, and of course the church got pretty upset. The word got back to the Pope and said, and the thinking was, well, we just have to shut this guy up. We just have to silence this guy because what he's saying is just really against the church. And if people start believing him, this could cause a lot of problems. And it's definitely against the teaching of the church. We don't want that. So they started threatening him with torture. And even then, he just kept on working because he thought he needed to prove to the world what he believed to be true. So finally, in 1633, the Pope ordered Cardinal Bellarmine to, to send down a sentence to Galileo, and he was to be imprisoned, and the matter of which was to be determined by the council. So first of all, the sentence was then divided into three parts. The first part was that he was, uh, that he was guilty of heresy, so meaning what he was saying was in direct confrontation to the teachings of the church, and that's called heresy, and so he was guilty of that. Because of that, he was going to be placed in prison, but they decided why don't we just put him under house arrest because at the time he was already in his 60s and he was a very old man at the time. So they felt we'll just go ahead and cause him to be locked up in his own house. And then any dialogue regarding, to the, Copernic regarding the Copernican theory was going to be banned. He was not allowed to do any writing, any saying, he was not allowed to speak about it because if he did, again, they would threaten him with torture. So it turned out that in 1608, a Dutch scientist actually designed a telescope. He had a paper design of a telescope and he got a patent in 1608 for that particular design. Galileo found out about it in 1608 and then he decided to construct one of those telescopes and in 1609 he succeeded in putting a telescope together that had a 3x magnification, which of course is not very much. He then ended up improving that to about 30x and then when he took his new telescope with 30x magnification and he looked at the these, these spheres, the planets, he found when he looked at Jupiter, he discovered three of the four moons, and they're perfectly lined up. And so he kept on observing those, observing those, and eventually he found the fourth moon, and again, they were lined up just perfectly. He first thought that there were planets, and the interesting part was that they were not revolving around the sun or the earth, but they were actually revolving around some other object in the universe. So the idea that there's more than one center, which Copernicus said, was proven by the fact that he saw another body in the universe, Jupiter, that had four other spheres revolving around it, the four moons of Jupiter. And again, so this was definitely in support of the idea that Copernicus said, there's not just one center in the universe with the Earth in it, there's more than one center, and here we have another center discovered. Another thing that Galileo did, which is actually not very smart when you think about it, he took his telescope and started looking at the sun, and of course you never should look at the sun, especially through a telescope, but he did observe sunspots on the sun, and by observing the sunspots over time, he realized that the sunspots were actually moving 
So two things, the sun is not this perfect glowing body but has blemishes on it. Not only that, he realized since the blemishes moved, moved from one side of the sun to the other side, he realized that the sun actually rotated on its axis, which again meant that the sun, just like other bodies in the universe, like the moon and like the earth, seem to be rotating on their axis. So it's not an aberration, it seems like this is a common thing in the universe. Finally, he also discovered the phases of Venus. When he started looking at Venus, he realized that Venus, just like the moon, goes through phases, and that often Venus looks more like the moon, of course in miniature, kind of like this, and then, then realized that's because Venus revolves around the sun, Earth revolves around the sun. If Venus is closer to the sun than the Earth, from its perspective, Venus is going to show these various phases. So again, to most people that wouldn't be proof, but to Galileo that definitely was in support of the concept that the planets revolved around the sun and that the earth revolved around the sun. And because of that, the phases of Venus definitely explain that and definitely are in support of that concept. So his whole life until he died, back in, he died in 1642, about nine or ten years after he went under house arrest, he determined that yes, this is true, the earth is not at the center, but the sun is at the center of the universe. And he worked his whole life in support of that concept and trying to prove it. So even under when he was under house arrest and he was threatened with torture, he just wanted the truth to come out. And he succeeded. That's how he did it.